and I thought I'd met a lot of the good fiddlers around and knew the pretty much what the Missouri repertoire was and when I met this guy he played me like 30 or 35 tunes that I'd never heard before and they were good tunes and they were good traditional tunes they weren't you know some tunes from some outside source they were like local tunes and his father uh, was named Dolph and he played the fiddle and Niall uh, when I met him he was probably in his late 70s early 80s and uh, he was Still going, strong. going yeah played like gangbusters and uh, he had also played with a handicap in that uh, he had injured his fingers. He was a very up-and-coming young fiddler as a teenager. And when he was about 18, he, in clear, trying to clear a corn picker, he got, you know, uh, that's a farm machinery accidents, you know, are so common. They're not as common now, but back in that day, everyone was missing digits because of the open flywheel threshing machines and these ancient tractors that had all these unguarded moving parts. And so one day he was trying to clear the, uh, the thre uh, corn picker and, and lost uh, the bone in one finger. He didn't lose the finger, but then, you know, he didn't have a digit. So, and then uh, another one, this one was kind of mangled up. So he had these two good and these two that could sort of do, but he still played, used all four to play. And uh, th then knowing that and how good he was, it was really astounding. Uh, so we're going to try to play. I made a list of five of his tell tunes him the telephone story. from his house, called somebody else, and they said, is that Dolph in the background playing? And it was not. It, it was not. So, so, so that was when he knew he kind of got his ability good. back, you know, because yeah. his dad was a great fiddler. His dad was a really well-known fiddler, actually, in the upper Midwest. He played on some of the radio stations that were in Iowa and Nebraska and Missouri, and uh, he was quite a well-known fiddler, and Niall was kind of following in his footsteps. So. Uh, so we're going to play, I, I made a list of five of Niles' tunes. Uh, first one's called Oak Ridge Stomp, it's in D. We'll I'm going to try to go through all of these so you won't learn all of all of them, but you'll get a dab, a dabble at. So go ahead and please get your instruments out, I'm, this isn't a demonstration. We're going to try to play little bits of them. But, and then uh, I'm going to play a tune in C. Uh, I think this is one of one he called the Tie Hacker Hoedown. There, was okay. a, there were a group of uh, itinerant guys who went through uh, one of the earliest railroads in the Midwest was the Hannibal to Hannibal to Quince let's see Quincy to Hannibal to St. Joseph so that's across the north part of Missouri they had a rail line and these itinerant guys went through cutting fresh oak rails there was oak timber on all the rivers up there even though it was prairie there was timber wherever there were rivers and creeks and so they were hand-hewn, guys went around and hand-hewn these huge oak ties that were laid along the railroad. And they went, as the railroad went and was built, they were cutting fresh ties that were being laid. So these tie hackers were itinerants that his dad learned tunes from. Uh, he'd got to their camps and they'd, they'd play fiddle at night. And uh, they didn't know where they were from or who they were. Uh, so, but some of these tunes came into that area from these tie hackers. And then we're going to learn a tune called West Muir, play, try to play a tune called West Muir's tune it's in C. And then one called the New Boston Hornpipe, which is in F. I don't know how many of you played in flat keys before. Okay, good. good. Yeah. Then if not, I'll give you a little, some ideas on how to do that. Because there's so many great tunes in F and B flat. And then last, uh, we'll, we'll play another tune in C called Hal Scott Special. But these are all square hoedowns, good for square dancing. Two A parts, two B parts, real standard, but they're really nice tunes. And and if I could say anything about executing Niles' tunes, uh, there he played very sprightly, you know, very upbeat. And he played ahead of the beat, like man. Right, I was gonna say. You had to get used to that, or else pretty soon you'd be going 140, 150 beats a minute. There was no, there was no, uh, he there was no swing to the way he played. He played on top of or ahead of the beat all the time, and. But he also played what I'd call, his music was very chiseled or faceted, you know, it's square. It was, he'd cut phrases off. It wasn't, the, there wasn't any playing across the bar line. Uh, he, I, that's the best term to use, it was, it was faceted, chiseled sounding. And we'll play a tune here and you'll get an idea of that concept. So we'll play the Oak Ridge Stomp first here. And have y'all heard Jeff Sides? Do you guys know who Jeff Sides is? Yes, there it is. Well, he's probably one of the other few people around that plays Niles tunes, I'd say. And he 
knows a bunch of them as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he, he was soft spoken too. Was really and he mumbled, yeah. <laughs> and, and he also thought that if you had a, a six pack of beer on a really hot day, if you if it was in the bag and you let left the bag open, that somehow that would keep the beer colder. <laughs> and, and he had this theory of thermodynamics, which I never quite understood. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and I remember he would say to you. Uh, not bad for a scrub, right? When you play a tune, that was a high compliment. Not bad for a scrub. Not bad for a scrub. So the Oak Ridge Stomp in D. Nice little square dance tunes, got very lively, and again, like I don't know if you can hear what I mean by it's square, faceted. You know, it's cut cuts off the phrases, but that gives it a little punch and drive. And he did a lot of nice stuff with his bow, uh, speeding up and slowing down his bow in passages. You know, you can kind of hear that. I'm trying to play it like him as best I can. Just play a, a quick uh, D scale, why don't we? Just real fast here. So, so I'm just gonna go one B at a time. We just go from here to here. Okay, here we go. Good. Now if we went on up to that, we're going to go up from there up to the A on the E string. So like, here we go. From the D on the A, here we go. Come on back down. What I'm talking about. <laughs> so now let's just play a, a D arpeggio because this note, this tune uses a lot of chord notes right off the bat. So we're gonna play open D, and then we're gonna play D F sharp A D on the A string, then F sharp A on the E string, and back down. Let me play it. Do that one time. Just listen. So all the D's, F sharps, and A's. Okay, here we go. Open D. Good, okay. So now let me give you the first little bit of the tune. I'll put, let's play the first part one time, kind of ha at half tempo, and then I'll show you the little, little pieces of it. Here we go. Just, just the two of us here. First note is a F sharp on the uh, on the E string. Find that. Okay. Okay. Let me make sure I'm in tune. Yes. 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 Here we go. Okay. So the let me play. I'll play you a passage, and you just play it back to me, and we'll go on. Since we're kind of a big group, I'm just going to kind of move through. But uh, I'll post this video I'm making on my YouTube channel, and also the I'll put the notes to the tune on my website you can find those if you want to but better to learn them by ear you know okay so here we go first little bit let's just listen to the first little passage sorry one more time so I'm starting right here one more time 
more time. Once more with feeling. Okay, now we're gonna go right to the open A. Listen. Listen one more time. What you get so far. Try that with me. Now, one thing uh, that a lot of fiddlers do, especially in the Midwest, Missouri, and around, is whenever we have a held open string, we double it up and play a unison. So where I've that part where I'm going. I'm gonna do a little extra thing with my fourth finger on the D. Listen one time. So I'm, so I'm playing the fourth finger A with the open A. Can you do that? Find that. Uh -huh. Listen one time. Listen one time. Try that with me. Uh -huh. And I, sometimes I'm, I do a little swoopy thing with my uh, playing on the F sharp and the G to get up that kind of like. Here we go. Like little grace notes, I'm, I'm just playing. If I played it slow, it'd be like this. F, G, A. I'm gonna go kind of quick. This is like a swoopy little. Okay, let's start that. Just play that little bit with the. Here we go. Okay, start back at the beginning. Here we go. About right here. First part, here we go. First part, yes. So, uh, would you call the swoopy thing? Is that sort of a mix of a slide and a hammer? No, there's no sliding. It's notes. Just, I just, it's like a flourish, though, all in one bow. You it's know. It's like a grace. It's, it's like grace notes. So it's like, okay, so it's a little bit like a slide, so quick. Yeah, it's not sliding though. Okay. Right. Okay. So next little bit. So here's the second part. Let's play it together. Okay. First note is we've got two uh, pickup notes. We're going to play F sharp and G to the open A. Like, just do that. Okay. Yeah, 
that's it. Okay, so let me play it. Give the phrase now. Listen. That first on the top there from the F sharp is. get so far as this. Okay, now we're going to the G on the E string. End up on C sharp. Okay, listen to what you got so far as this. End up on the open. Uh, end up on the A on the E string. Okay. Listen one one more time. Okay. Okay. Now from there you're gonna go. I'll start on that little bit. Listen one time. Just try to play it, okay? Just listen with me. Ready, go. play through the whole tune and then we're all gonna play it together that's enough we can get I hear a lot of it coming back right so let's just play it together here we go let's play Pat and I'll play through the whole tune once and then you guys will slow it down a little bit and you guys come in First little bit is okay. Here we go. Not that speed. Slow mo.
So let's let's move over and try to play a, a tune in C. Uh, how many people like tunes in C? They're my, like my favorites, you know. Yes. <laughs> oh, Oak Ridge Stomp. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a good, quick question about that. Sure. The last song is that it seems like you uh, the upbow is mm -hmm. being used a lot. Yeah, he kind of upbowed a lot. He did. <laughs> I don't know. Like on that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it gives a little lift, you know. And again, for breaking the fr phrasing it, you know, he phrased it a lot by pushing that up bow. So let's play another one called Hal Scott Special. And see, I don't know who Hal Scott was. He never, he never did say, did he? Some old, some old fiddler from around there in, uh, in North Missouri. But, you know, uh, um, Betsy, you know, t is playing a lot of Ozark music. And Missouri's got two... Maine, the, Missouri's a pretty complicated state because we have eight border states and, you know, ha, we're uh, partly held by the Spanish, then the French, then the Americans, and the, and so there's a lot, and there's a lot of different geography and flora and fauna there, probably more varied than any other state in the country, but two big main regions are the Ozarks and the Plains in the north. So Nile would have been from the Plains in the north, and that Oak Ridge, all those oak trees that those tie hackers would have cut, they'd all lie along these big flat muddy rivers that flow through that part of the country. Whereas you have in the Ozarks nice clear, you know, streams with stones in the bottom that you can see see down to. It's mostly mud in North Missouri. <laughs> it's a good place for growing corn and soybeans. Though. So Hal Scott specials in C. Let's play a little I've bit. I've never heard it. You've never heard it? Oh my no. gosh. <laughs> You're in for a treat. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Special. It's a notey tune. Yeah, it's good. But it's like one of our typical Missouri Midwestern tunes that we use a lot of notes. You know, it's a lot of not much rest for your left hand there. So, uh, so that tune's in C. So, and if you just listen to the first little bit, it's using the C chord notes a lot. You know, like that. So, so we're gonna play a C arpeggio before we do anything else. So, so let's start right here on C on the G string. Can you find that? Okay, here we go. C, all the C's, E's, and G's. Here we go. Keep going. And now we're going to have to push the envelope here, and we're going to shove our pinky out and play that C, because we have to do that on the second part. So listen one time, so it'd be like... <laughs> so, so when we get to the second part, we'll have to shove our pinky up there, uh, hit it the best you can. That's all I can say. All right. So, so the first little bit sounds like this. It's got pickup notes. Kind of goes down first before it goes up. Let's see. Uh, it's always good to go down first before you go up, isn't it? As a, as a general rule. Boy, I could sure lose it. Lose a little taste of this. If you missed my training workshop yesterday, there was recommendation that you perform several 12-ounce curls per day. So it's one of the best exercises. So let's see here. Listen one time, I'll just play the first part. Now, 
I'm a very ad hoc kind of bower, so I can't tell you exactly how to bow that, but just kind of watch me and figure out. But there is a lot of string crossing. So just, we're going to start right here on this G here. Okay, on the, on the D string, just find that note. Okay, now listen to the first little bit. Okay, listen one more time. I'm just using chord notes. That's just all arpeggio notes. So let's try that bit. One more time. All right, let me play through it so I don't give you a bum note here. Listen one more time. Let's try that little part right there. just listen so it kind of reversed it a little bit listen one time start on this E here one more time here's what you got those got so far just listen Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're switching over to G chord notes, so we're gonna play on this B here. Listen. Listen one time. That's just a scale. Start on B, go up to E, and I finger the fourth finger E, so I don't have to do a string cross. Here, here we go. Listen, here we go, here we go. Okay, with me on the B. That last, last little bit is. So the whole thing is, li just listen one time. Here's what we got so far, just listen one time. <laughs> okay, here's, let's try that together. bit is this. That, start on this G on the E string. So it's Let's play it. Here we go. Just get as much of it as you can.
that's a pretty noty. That's not an easy tune. So it's not that it's not a beginner tune by any stretch of the imagination. So just hang right in there. So uh, so second part goes not as many notes actually. So it's, that's kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> on the A and E string. So first little bit is just listen one time. Okay, play that with me. It's all on the E. And I'm using the F sharp once I, I play the F on the way up, but the rest of it's F sharp. Listen one time. There's a chord uh, playing uh, the G on the E string and the D on the A string. Okay. So, so listen what you got so far. Here, here, here we go. Just listen. Then you push your pinky out to that C. Then, then get right back with your second second finger on the G. So listen one time. I'll play it real slow. Just listen. Uh, G, so, yeah. Then, then you, then you're kind of playing. Yeah, yeah. So it's G right to B. I just play that C with my pinky. I just shove it out there. You know. Let's try to play that second part, shall we? Here, here we go.
finish. That was the big finish. <laughs> in the middle of the tune. In the middle of the tune, yeah. Um, yes. But, so, you talked a bit about now playing very cleanly and mm -hmm. a lot of articulation. Did he actually slide up to that C or did he skip to third position and come down? No, they weren't third position kind of people, you know. They were just... <laughs> okay, I didn't know. <laughs> It would just work that, hit that one note and get out of there, you know. <laughs> What's that? One position. Only. That's right. One position. Only. I didn't know if he'd, he'd pull up and come down. No, no, no. Just to make it clean. No, no. He just, just reached other. He just hit it. You know, he played that tune enough times. He didn't need to worry about missing the note. You know, so. You gotta tell him his fingers were chopped off. Yeah, yeah I mentioned that. Yeah. He had a farming accident, right? And his fingers were cut. Like this, so he had his first. His first finger was down to his knuck, first knuckle. And the second one was kind of halfway, and the third one was to the second knuckle. Yeah, and so, one of them was just meat on the end too. There was wasn't right. even a bone in it there. Wasn't really, yeah, so he, uh, <laughs> he really had so he kind of looked like a spider crawling on the finger. But it, he, but he, it didn't stop him. No. And he actually worked really hard to get back to playing after he, he heard yeah, after he, I guess he cut it on like wow. a rafter or something. Well, I think it was a corn picker so thing, you know, got caught in it, yeah, right. trying to free a corn picker. Mm. But he just, he just did. Yeah. No. And he played really well. Right. I mean, was, and, and in tune and clean. Tune. I judged a state contest one time. They had a senior division, and all the seniors played. They were all a bunch of great people. And he smoked them. I mean, he just was way far better wow. than all of them yeah. Yeah. at that time. So did he use his corn picker? Yeah. Why well, he just... Just, yeah, he used to start playing, but he just played regular. But he never. Yeah, it just looked really weird. He never really adjusted his fingering at all. No, though. not really. He just managed to play with those fingers. It, yeah, wow. yeah, it was amazing. Yes, that was Hal Scott's special, but we don't know who Hal Scott was. Some old fiddler from North Missouri. You know. Yeah, you, you gave a better description on the yeah. injury than I did. Because I thought it was those fingers. It was, those. it was just like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah his index finger was... was right. All right, what do you want me to try now? Tie hacker hoedown. Oh, the tie is... I don't know if this is tie hacker or old reunion. You'll have to tell me which one. That's old reunion, okay. Let's, we'll play old reunion instead of the tie hacker team. Well, because that's the one you can remember. That's the one I can remember right now. That's one of the best tunes. It it is a really good tune, old reunion, and and uh, that's I think that old reunion was uh, a title for a tune for an event. You know, they used to have a, like a, a an old settlers reunion back in those days, and they'd have a like a little farm fair in this little town there in Elmer, Missouri. In fact, sometimes they called it the Elmer reunion, not just old reunion. Elmer was not a very big town, as you might guess. Nor was Buckland where Nile was from. But so yeah, let's play a little the uh, the old reunion. So that's, and again, I tried to play that as much as I could like Nile. He had a way of, and it made his music really exciting, but he would take a little bit of the phrase and speed it up, and then the next would back down to where it's supposed to be. And it was very, uh, uh, if you, if the guitar player or the accompanist didn't you know, didn't know that. You, it'd be like this, they'd try to think he was actually speeding up, and so they'd follow him, and then pretty soon it's this cyclic effect of pretty soon they're playing it too fast that you can't even play a tune anymore. So you had to really hold back when you're playing with Niall and just keep the beat. And he would play around very, very playfully, you know, with, with the rhythm, but he was still dead on, you know, when it came right down to it. So he, but he'd speed up and expand time and compress it, but it always came out at the end, so. 
So this one's in C also. So, so we're going to start out with a unison uh, E. So everybody just kind of play that unison E. So what you're doing is you're playing an E on the, with your fourth finger on the on the A string. Okay. I'll give you the first little bit. Listen one more time. That last little bit is this. Listen. So listen one more time. Here. Then we're gonna go up on the E string. Listen, listen one more time. Listen. little bit is open A let me play the whole thing this is one actually that doesn't do a lot of repeating it doesn't take the same phrase and play it over again it's it's still the same uh, doing the same thing with the tune but it just has some very vari note variation please play the first part one more time just listen Play, mess around with that a little bit here. Here we go. Second part goes sounds like this. So let's try a little bit of that. So it starts out, there's no pickup notes, it just jumps right in, and the first note is G, and it just goes back and forth to the open A. Listen. That's the first little phrase. Listen one time. Here we go. time. One more. Then I'm going to go 
to kind of G chord notes. Listen. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hold on. If you play slow, you can't play the notes. You know. on the B. Again. That last little bit is. More. So back to this B. Listen one time. What you have so far sounds like this. Okay. Start on that G. Start back at the beginning. We'll just kind of play it, you know, together. Best, much as enough you got, just play along here. So, so here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 